All right, we're joined now by Vermont student athletes Ryan Davis and Ben Shungu. Uh, questions are available for these young men. Uh, just raise your hand. We'll make, bring a microphone over, and um, whenever someone raises their hand, we'll start down here. This gentleman right here. Microphone's coming. Hey guys, I'm Bob Holt, the Arkansas Democrat. Is that maybe maybe Ben could take this, and then Ryan. Arkansas has you know, been a pretty good three-point defensive team the last part of the season, but they weren't very good in their last game against a and I know you guys are shooting the ball real well from three. What, what do you think of their three-point defense, and, and, how do you, and what do you think of you all as a three-point shooting team? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, Arkansas definitely prides themselves on, on their defensive end. Um, you know, um, I think they force teams to try to make a tough and take tough shots on the offensive end. Um, you know, but uh, with the game plan that we have um, and how well we shoot and how well we move the ball, I think um, we'll be able to generate good shots, uh, especially from threes, but also get into the paint and uh, um, finish that in there too. Yeah, and just to kind of go off that, I think right now we're playing with a lot of confidence and we're shooting the ball real well. Um, like Ben said, Arkansas does pose, you know, a threat because, you know, they're very long athletic. And so a lot of shots can be erased at the rim, but just being able to play outside and kind of do what we do and find the find the open man is something that we pride ourselves on. Andre Robinson, Challenger Community News. Congratulations on your success. Ben, this question is for you. What experience did you take from the 2019 tournament that will help you in this year's tournament coming up? Um, I mean, I think just, you know, just staying loose, um, just enjoying the moment. Uh, you know, obviously it's a, it's a great, uh, great deal to be here, um, you know, but just to really just stay loose, um, be with the guys and just, uh, enjoying the moment. Um, you know, last time we lost, obviously, but, you know, I think the energy that we got right now and the momentum that we're uh, carrying over from winning the championship um, is definitely uh, uh, different from past years. And so, um, you know, just hopefully we can get a win tomorrow. Right up in front, John had a question up here. Hi, John Worrow with the Associated Press. This is for Ben. Um, what's it mean to you or how validating is it that your decision is to come back, to, to play this graduate season and what's kind of like unique with this, you know, this tournament where there's a lot of players with addition, an additional year of experience and how's that unique to you and what's that mean to you? Yeah, um, it's definitely unique. Um, you know, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Um, and so, um, you know, with the extra year, it's, uh, to me, um, it's been helpful. Um, you know, um, came back to win the championship, uh, conference championship, and we did that. Um, but now um, the next goal is to win a, uh, you know, a couple games in the tournament. And, um, you know, we've all said it before, and, um, you know, um, whoever we play, we like our matchup. And, um, you know, uh, going into the game, uh, we're pretty confident with um, what we can do and how we can execute and not win the game. Question Ryan. back. Ryan, we talked a little bit in the last couple of days about the differences between this Arkansas team and maybe the Florida State team, the Purdue team that Vermont's played against in the tournament before in that they don't have the overwhelming size disadvantage that you guys are dealing with. What are some of the things, though, that you guys have noticed just now that you've had some time to look at film and, and kind of figure out the way they play that you guys kind of need to be prepared for tomorrow? Yeah, <clears throat> I think we definitely have to be prepared for how, they, how well they play in transition and how fast they play. Um, especially with their size and their length, their ability to get to the rim and also crash the board is something that we need to be prepared for and, and be ready for the fight in that sense. But um, yeah, like I said uh, earlier, um, it's not a team that has overwhelming size at the rim. So there will be opportunities to play um, and kind of finish down there as well. Marshall Kramsky, NBC5 News. Ryan, a lot of teams, a lot of experts around the country have this game circled as a potential upset. How are you guys handling that notoriety and pressure? I think there's no pressure. You know, I think we just got to go out there and execute um, to the best of our ability and just play what we play, what we've done all year. And I think that, you know, it's going to give us a good chance to win. Um, like what I said, um, I don't think there's necessarily pressure on us. Um, you know, we, we know what we're capable of. We know the type of team that we are. And uh, we also know that, um, you know, we can beat, you know, these teams and that's in the tournament right now. And so, um, you know, we're, we're all confident. Um, and, you know, now we just got to stick to our game plan and execute it tomorrow. 
from. And I know you guys probably scout a lot off numbers, maybe more than names. So, Ben, I'd like to ask you about J.D. Note, number one. He's got you know, a couple of small American, third team, all SEC. And then maybe after Ben answers, Ryan, uh, number 10, Jalen Williams for them. He, you're right, they don't have a ton of size, but he is 6'10 and does a lot of things. He's drawn 49 charges, pretty amazing. So maybe Ben about Note, number, number one, and then Ryan on Jalen Williams, number 10. Yeah, um, you know, he's a great player. Um, you know, he's, um, you know, he can score on all three levels. Um, and, you know, he's definitely one of the key players that, um, that are, that's on our scout. And, um, you know, we're just going to try to make it tough on him, um, trying to you know, get out of his hands. Um, but then just, uh, you know, guard as a team. You know, we pride ourselves with being able to guard people, um, well, other teams as well as, you know, certain people with the whole team, not just one player. So, uh, you know, but uh, props to him for, you know, being a good player. Yeah, and then on Williams, I think, you know, he's a very uh, unique skill set and very uh, something that his size is very um, unique in the sense that, uh, you know, he can stretch it out and he can also, you know, play off the dribble and, and stuff. So um, very skilled, big, but also um, kind of makes him unique on defenses. Like you said, his ability to take charge as well as race shots with his blocking ability. So that's something that, you know, is um, unique to him and some credit for him for being able to do that. Question in the back. Ryan, this question is for you. Can you talk about some of the things that Coach Becker has done to elevate your game, help you elevate your game, some of the conversations that he's had with you? Yeah, I think, you know, with the, all the coaches staff, just the continuous work throughout my time here has been something that, you know, I've greatly appreciated and just kind of being able to put me in spots uh, where I'm able to succeed. And, um, you know, along with that, having great teammates, you know, like Ben, like others that just find me in those spots and um, allow me to kind of um, take it from there. So, hey, you guys have an all-senior starting lineup, and, and you know, beyond four years in some of your all's cases, a lot of experience. I know you've got a couple uh, transfers, but you guys have been together a long time. How, how valuable do you think that is to have an all-senior starting lineup? Oh, um, uh, I think it's um, you know, it's definitely our uh, it's an advantage to us for sure. Um, being able to be in the program for as long, and so now you know we know the ins and outs of the what we want to do offensively and defensively, and so um, having a veteran group definitely helps. Um, and then also we just carry along the couple of the transfers and you know the young guys, freshmen and whatnot, um, it makes it easier on them too to kind of just um, you know not take a long time to really um, learn our system. Um, but also with just you know being in close games too, I think uh, you know being able to have that veteran group and sticking together um, has helped us uh, this season. Um, and just, uh, it's definitely a good thing for sure. Yeah, and I think in general, teams are older this year, obviously because of the COVID year. And we were able to return, you know, Ben, uh, Justin, and other guys. So um, it's definitely something, it's an advantage to us and allows us to, like Ben say, uh, you know, we have a lot of guys that's been in the, the system for a long time and, and know what to do. So it's definitely an advantage to us, especially in this late in the year. And the white here. Ben, when you guys are successful, it's usually you and Ryan having a good game and a third piece coming along. Who and why do you think is it gonna, do you feel good about stepping up in this first round? Say that again? Who and why do you think will step up with you and Ryan in this first round out of your teammates? Um, I mean, it's you know, kind of hard to pinpoint you know, a certain individual. Um, uh, just knowing our, our team and knowing uh, how much work we put in, um, you know, from the summer until now, um, anybody really can step up and I think you know, uh, our coach and our coaching staff does a good job with picking out certain people and adding them to our roster and, uh, you know, being able to just uh, contribute at any point in the game and just staying ready, really. So, um, you know, I think, um, you know, I don't have a specific answer for you, but, um, you know, I think we all play well. In the back. They say everything's fresh in Vermont. Can you tell us some of the fresh perspectives that you're giving to people that's younger than you that want to be like you and, and Ryan? Um, I mean, <laughs> Vermont's a great place, by the way. Uh, but um, I mean, I think uh, just, you know, um, especially with this team and kind of how we do things, um, we're like a blue collar team and, you know, nothing's really given to you. Uh, you got to earn it. And so, um, you know, to the kids out there who's, you know, trying to be like us or uh, look up to us, um, you know, hard work pays off and being dedicated to your sport or anything you do in life really, um, you know, uh, You'll definitely uh, see, um, 
you know, some gains from that. And just uh, sticking true to yourself, too. Um, you know, sticking true to yourself and believing in yourself, too, um, um, has kind of been, um, you know, the, uh, the aura at Vermont. Um, Alex Brownlee from the Burlington Free Press. Ben, this is for you. Uh, as a Vermont native, what does it mean to represent uh, UVM in Vermont at the NCAA tournament? It means a lot. Um, you know, I grew up in Vermont, obviously, and this is my third NCAA uh, tournament appearance. And so, um, you know, it's uh, definitely nice to be able to represent your state and uh, uh, represent your team and um, come in here um, with a lot of confidence and coming into um, this building and this tournament, um, you know, going out there and trying to get a win. So um, it's a blessing to be here and it's a blessing to be able to play basketball and uh, excited. Yeah, I mean, for, for Ben first and Ryan, you know, Coach Becker, I mean, you look at his record, pretty impressive. I'm sure people in this part of the country know about him. He's not maybe a guy people know about in the South and Midwest and West and all that. What, what do you think's made him such, such a good coach for so long? Um, he's just, um, uh, like Ryan said um, earlier, um, you know, he's, he knows how to make, um, you know, everybody on the team successful and put people in certain positions. Um, our whole staff really, um, obviously, he's the head of it, but, um, you know, he just knows how to, um, you know, game plan and, um, you know, in certain situations knows how to put together a play or, um, you know, just come up with a game plan before the game and uh, be able to execute it, really. Um, and then on top of that, um, the trust that he has in us, too, um, you know, it's, it's, it's everything as, as a player. You know, you want your coach, your head coach to really trust you, trust you and uh, be able to be out there on the court and, um, you know, kind of just do your own thing. So um, the relationship that he has with every one of his players um, is special. Is there, I'm sorry, you want to add to that? Yeah, and just to add on that, I think that our, you know, something that he's really proud of himself is the toughness and, and just kind of the demanding out of the players that um, kind of holds us to a higher standard than maybe you can even see for yourself. So when you come to the program, you might not see the exact same thing that he sees in mind for you, but he has this picture of you and then really demands out of it and tries to get the most out of you. So I would just add that. Uh, Ryan, Finn Sullivan and Justin Mazzulla are both upperclassmen, but uh, it's their first NCAA tournament appearance because they're transfers. What advice have you had for them? Because they're in this interesting spot where they are upperclassmen with the same class as you guys, but it's their first time at the big dance. I think it's just to be loose and confident, kind of like the, the, what we've been saying, just go out there, have fun, enjoy the moment, but also, you know, we're here to win at the end of the day. So um, being able to go out there and loose and confident, just like we have all year, is something that, um, you know, we got to be able to do. So, What about you, Ben? Um, just like what Ryan said, really, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's tough, obviously, coming from a mid-major school. Um, you know, you don't have, uh, I guess, the, you know, um, the chances to get to the tournament, it's definitely a harder road, but when you do get here, um, you do have to, have to really just enjoy the moment. Um, and, you know, we're here to win. Uh, don't get me wrong, we're here to win, but, um, you know, it is pretty cool to be here. So enjoy the moment for sure. Yeah, we have time for one more question. Can I go front here? Oh, I'm sorry, it's one in the back. I apologize. Yeah. I didn't see it in the microphone. Benny, and then for Ryan Wallace, uh, but Benny, uh, has it kind of struck you yet that however long this ride goes, that kind of the long winding road to get here is, is kind of coming to a close within the next couple of weeks or whatever it is here? No, nah, it hasn't struck me yet. I'm just, I'm here to play basketball, man. Just can't wait till tomorrow. And then uh, when that comes, you know, it'll come at, certain po at a, some point, but um, just, you know, trying to enjoy the moment and stay in the moment, so. And then Ryan, same question for you. Yeah, the same answer's been. <laughs> so that's all I got. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank Good you. luck tomorrow. Thank you. Shit.
joined now by Vermont head coach John Becker. Uh, coach, if you have a minute, I'd like to start with an opening statement and then we'll take some questions. Sure. It's uh, great to be back in Buffalo and um, we're really excited to be here and, um, um, you know, have a chance to compete in the NCAA tournament again. You know, we've, we've had an incredible run through the conference tournament, winning by, I think, 36 and a half points uh, per game and, and come in really confidently. Um, but no, we have our hands full against one of the best teams in the country in Arkansas. So, um, you know, we've had a couple good days of practice and we look forward to tomorrow night. All right, thank you. John, you want to start things off? Get John a microphone down here. Hey, John. Uh, John Worrell with the Associated Press. About the tournament run that you had, how do you put that into perspective knowing that games, winning games by 39 points isn't generally something that happens in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, yes, we understand that. And um, it was, um, you know, unexpected to a degree. But, you know, we put the tape on of Arkansas and it uh, recalibrated our guys pretty quickly. <laughs> Coach, I'm uh, Bob Holt, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, um, I know you guys operate more on numbers. But you, Arkansas has got a couple older guys, seniors who are transfers getting to play in the NCAAs for the first time, um, Amude zero and, and Tony five. Just wondering um, what, what your take is on those guys. Yeah, Amude can, can really shoot it and has been great for them. And, and, and um, Tony might be one of the best cutters off the ball that um, – that we'll face this year. So they, they are a big part of their team and, and um, um, pose problems, you know, and have unique skill sets. So, um, you know, they're, they're really good players. Trent, you heard Shirley Walk talk about their defense. What does it mean to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, defensively, they're just big, big and athletic and strong. And like their whole team, I mean, they're the best defensive team in the, in the Southeast Conference. And uh, that's going to be a big challenge for us tomorrow is um, um, not turning the ball over. You know, shots and not turnovers, and and um, those guys uh, really can get into you and and um, be physical and athletic and and block shots at the rim. And so we're going to have to make great decisions tomorrow. Coach Finn Sullivan and Justin Missoula, both in your starting lineup, upperclassmen, but they're transfers who, you know, haven't played in the tournament yet. What in that interesting position? What advice do you have for them? Yeah, I mean, I, th I was more worried about them uh, in the championship game. You know that. The, the pressure that that game um, has to it um, in a one-bid league where you got to win that game to, to get to here. So I think there's some pressure taken off them at this point. And, um, you know, uh, but we want to just continue. You know, we're, we're, we're here to, to compete. And um, they've been really, really good. Um, and, um, you know, and the way they played in that championship game gives me confidence that they'll, uh, they'll be fine tomorrow night. Andre Robinson, Challenger Community News. Congratulations, Coach Becker, on your success. Uh, my question for you is, what makes this team different uh, from the 2019 uh, team that you had? Yeah, I mean, this is the best offensive team I've had. Um, and um, we continue to be great um, defensively and, 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 and rebounding and, and toughness, the things that are uh, the cornerstones of our, our, our program. But this team offensively plays with the best pace. Um, we've shot the ball the best uh, from an efficiency number. Uh, it's it's the best we've been. So, um, you know, and just you know, we're, we're we're bigger at the guard spot, and we we look more like a high major team than we ever have, just because of the athleticism and the size of our players. So, um, you know, every year hopefully we're getting a little bit better, um, and I think we've gotten a little bit better maybe from that 2019 team that was obviously really good too. Coach, you mentioned Arkansas's defense, and it has been really good for the most part for 20-plus games, but Eric wasn't very happy against Texas A&M. I'm sure you watched that SEC tournament, and A&M had 8 out of 15, and Eric said, you know, I mean, that was kind of a relapse early in the year when they were struggling. I don't know you guys have great three-point numbers. How do you see their three-point defense against your, your three-point shooting? Yeah, I mean, I think if we can take care of the ball initially, you know, early in the clock, if we can – handle their, their pressure in the full court and up, you know, pressing up into us at half court. If we can handle that, um, that initial part of the, the shot clock um, and then, you know, kind of get into our offense, I think 
we'll have an opportunity to generate some good offense, but um, we'll see. I mean, that's the thing you just don't know is you, you got to get into the game and feel the game a little bit and feel their athleticism and their, uh, you know, and their, their size and things like that. Um, and so, um, but they're going to be really, really good defensive. I mean, I competed against Coach Musselman's team when he was at Nevada 2016, I think it was, in the semifinals of the, uh, of the CBI. We were both in the CBI that year, and uh, we played them out there, and they, they beat the heck out of us. And they were, you know, played a similar aggressive um, athletic style, and, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full tomorrow night. Uh, JB, you guys have had a lot of kind of close games against power conference competition and most of the time haven't been able to kind of get over the hump and, and get the win. The last time that you were able to do it was against St. John's uh, and obviously Coach Anderson, Coach Musselman maybe run a little bit of a similar style. Is that kind of something that you've thought about at all, kind of trying to figure out how to attack, making sure that you're keeping I mean, not, not really, but... Um... But that does give our player, you know, does give our program confidence that we can, like you said, uh, finish off a game against uh, a high major team. And we played Providence um, and Maryland this year to 10 point games, essentially. Um, and we've gone back to review those games to, to just see how we responded to, um, to that high major, um, you know, athleticism and size. And uh, so um, we've drawn a little bit from that, but um, you know, we're a veteran group, and we've played a lot of these big games. We've, most of our guys have played in the tournament, um, and we've competed pretty well, you know. And, and so um, we're going to have to play really, really well. We know we're going to have to play really, really well uh, in order to, to pull off an upset. And so um, we're going to have to make threes. We're going to have to take care of the ball. We're going to have to rebound. Um, and, um, you know, and then, and then to give ourselves a chance. Coach, when you guys are most successful, you know, the big two between Ryan Davis and Ben Shangu are doing good things. And then typically there's a third person in that game. Who and why do you like going into this game for you guys? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I was encouraged, you know, Finn started off great in the, um, you know, earlier in the year and then kind of uh, struggled a little bit offensively. He's been great defensively all year, but he was great on both sides of the ball, I thought, in the championship game. Um, you know, Isaiah has been that third guy for most of the year. Uh, maybe not scoring, but he handles the ball a lot. He's our leading rebounder, our leading assist guy. And so um, he's going to have to play well. And then Justin, you know, in a game like this with his cutting ability, um, I think he's going to have opportunities, you know, and, and um, um, you know, he's kind of our heartbeat. Up front again? Or right, go ahead, sir. Um, Alex Brown from the Burlington Free Press. John, when, when did you realize that things started to snap into focus, that your offense was legit and it wasn't just a short trend? Yeah, probably um, at the start of conference play when we were, you know, um, I think, you know, we're averaging over 80 points. Uh, we pushed up against, you know, close to 100. I think we had 98 a couple times. And, um, you know, things started clicking and, and – um, uh, and then it just continued and then we clinched the league with five games to go and then it got a little squirrely there for a couple games but then right back to it you know in, in the in, in the playoffs so uh, we I thought we played really good offense in the non-conference against really good competition mostly on the road and we shot we were shooting 29 percent from three and we were generating wide open shots we couldn't make them and then you know after the holidays, we come back and, and then we were making everything. And so, um, and that's pretty much continued through, you know, uh, for the rest of the year. And, and guys have gotten confident now. And, um, but it all starts on that end with Benny and, and Ryan. You know, our, our offensive game plans are built around how teams are going to guard them. And they've been consistent, consistently great all year. Uh, JD Note, not number one for them. Uh, for Arkansas, he's gotten some All-American third-team recognition at AP and Sporting News. Just wondering what your take is on him. Oh, he's a terrific player. Um, you know, mid-major kid that transferred up, first-team All-League uh, in the SEC, which we all know is one of the best conferences in the country. Um, just kind of, you know, relentless offensively. Um, you know, it's hard to keep in front, can finish around the rim, uh, is a good passer, you know, will make the right play. Um, but he's playing downhill, 
and you got to you got to deal with him uh, and the Williams Williams kid. You got to deal with those two guys, and they're involved in a, you know early ball screen action, and um, you you got to be really really sharp with that uh, to have a chance to kind of guard him in the half court. Coach, you've been in this position a month, number of times now, being the mid major team as the lower seed. The night before you take on the higher seed in the NCAA tournament. What are the emotions of the day before for you? You know, it, obviously excitement, you know, and, and um, it's great to have huge travel party and, and, and the experience for our, our players. Um, and this at, at all levels, but at the mid-major level, you know, having to win your conference tournament, like this is what you work for all year. And um, so I feel really good for the players and the, the, the people that get to come to this and my staff and um, it's it's the best tournament in the world the best sporting event in the world and to be able to be part of it um, it never gets old you know it, it's it's really awesome but um, but I'm nervous you know I, I feel like a day before any game you know we have expectations that we're here to win and um, the nerves of making sure that we're prepared enough and that we have the right game plan put together and um, you know so I, in past years, I've, I've been a little looser and just kind of like happy to be here. Um, I don't feel like that this year. Go in front here. Hey, Coach, I know a lot of people think about the one and done guys and the young guys, but you all start an all senior lineup. Arkansas starts four seniors, and some of them are transferred. You got some transfers too. But what do you think about a matchup with nine senior starters? That sounds kind of kind of old school. Yeah, it does, and and I think college basketball in general is older, and it's probably why the the product's been so good this year. There's just all everyone's old because of the COVID year, um, and so it's going to be good basketball. It's going to be. Um, I mean, I think this tournament's going to be incredible, um, and uh, it gives everybody. You know. It, it's just going to, I think there's going to be upsets. I think it's just, it levels the playing field a little bit. And um, yeah, with nine senior starters tomorrow, it's going to be, uh, hope, hopefully, it's a good basketball game. Coach, what is it about your coaching style that makes these athletes actually want to stay at Vermont? <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for asking that. Um, I, uh, that's one thing I'm really proud of is that we don't, you know, I can count on one hand probably the guys that have transferred out of this program. And, um, and we've obviously been really good because we have really good players. And, and I think it speaks to the experience that, that our, our players are having um, from, from, uh, from my coaching staff um, and the job that they do and the relationships they build uh, to the respectful nature I, I, I hope that we have, that I know we have as far as how they're being treated, they're being coached the right way. Um, they trust us. They believe what we're telling them, and um, and we win a lot, you know. And that, that, that's a big part of it too. And so, um, it's a great academic university. It's a community that loves the basketball team and cares about basketball and supports us uh, in an incredible way. And, and I think hopefully you'll feel you'll see that tomorrow with the turnout of Vermont fans. Hopefully that will be here. And so it's it's a combination of things, but something that I'm probably most proud of is that. Um, guys stay here and you know a lot of our guys have a lot of options and a lot of people pulling you know not a lot of people but people pulling them in, in in other directions and they choose to stay here and play for ultimately play for me and um i don't take that lightly right, what's that right, yes all right we have time for one more question you want to go in front here okay. this is kind of fun one hopefully i don't know if you knew this um, Finn, well, I know you know he came from San Diego. That's where Eric played, University of San Diego. And Eric said that his, his youngest son, Matthew, he, he doesn't play, but he goes to San Diego. And he said they had a class together a couple of years ago. I guess that's kind of one of those small yeah. world things. Just wondering if you had any thoughts on that. No, I, did, I didn't know that. You know, um, but that's part of the thing when you have transfers that play on other teams with other guys. I have seen some of our guys um, do know some other guys on other teams, but – um, yeah, that's cool. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right, just a reminder, a recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritome.com. Transcripts are provided by, the, by ASAP and will be posted shortly.
Thanks for joining us, and we'll see everyone tomorrow.